Good morning, Jason Swazowski here with Milton Martin Toyota. Here to talk to you this morning about the 2013 FJ Cruiser versus the 2013 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. Uh, great vehicles. So both of them, uh, people that are looking at either one of these vehicles too, they're naturally looking for something too that's going to be convenient for you know, a family of two, three, four, or five, but they're also looking for something too that can be a fun, exciting vehicle on the weekends too. But there's a huge difference between these two vehicles when you talk from a safety standpoint, when you talk from a convenience standpoint, when you talk from, you know, money, you know, how much these vehicles are going to cost you in comparison to long-term upkeep, that type of thing. So let's talk a little bit about those. First thing to do, let's start at the front here and talk about the fact too that daytime running lights. Tests show that vehicles that have daytime running lights too are 11% less likely to be in an accident too because they're more visible. They're more visible in the morning times, during the day times for oncoming traffic. Not necessarily pay, you know, give you a, an additional benefit during the daytime, but it does make it more visible for those people too that are coming up on you to see, hey, there's a car right there. So less likely to be in an accident. Standard on the 2013 FJ Cruiser, not available you know, on the Jeep Wrangler. So huge plus there. When you talk at the braking difference between these two, 15 feet, 15 feet shorter braking distance from 60 to zero on the FJ Cruiser you know, versus the Jeep Wrangler. Again, that's the difference when you break that down too to literally almost an entire car length you know, between you and not being in an accident and the Jeep ended up hitting something in front of it though. So that's a huge you know, uh, bit of savings right there. All right? Side curtain airbags. All right, side curtain airbags naturally too are going to be standard on the FJ Cruiser. Now the benefit of a side curtain airbag naturally too is when the airbag basically blows, it blows and it comes down to cover all the glass in the vehicle too. The problem that you deal with though with, an, with the uh, Jeep is the fact too that whether it comes in a soft top or it comes in a hard top, all right, they only make it in the hard top. It's an available option too, but it's not available. So if you go soft top, you're not going to get that, that safety feature that's going to be standard on this. And that's if you have kids, you know, or if it's just you and your wife and you're hitting the side, that's a huge benefit for you. So if you take a look too, the, you know, the way this would work too with all the windows, I mean, you've got windows all up and down the side, and it's going to be a huge benefit to you being able to do that. Now, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, all right, they do a 31 mile per hour crash test on this vehicle versus the Jeep. They take a 3,300 pound sled and slam it into the side of that vehicle. Now I'm going to shut these doors real quick. All right. Imagine a 3,300 pound sled, you know, crashing into the side of that vehicle right there. In the test results, what they determined was the fact too that the rating that the FJ Cruiser got was a good rating in that result. All right. The Jeep got marginal. Now, a marginal is basically almost borderline poor. So you have to think about the fact too that the reality and the fact too that somebody could actually get hurt in those situations too is much greater in that instance right there. So you also look at, you know, the fact too, we've talked about Toyota Care, right? When you talk about long-term dependability, you talk about the, you know, the cost of ownership. Toyota rewards every single new car buyer with a two-year, 25,000-mile free maintenance plan. And what they do is they cover, you know, roadside assistance. They cover anything that's in your scheduled maintenance guide that the manufacturer would suggest that you do for mileage one to 25,000 miles. They cover every bit of that. Oil changes, tire rotations, you don't pay for any of that. Jeep does not offer any type of assistance. Now let's talk about what the experts say about these two vehicles. JD Power and Associates does a rating of initial quality of all new vehicles. Now when they rated this vehicle versus you know, the Jeep, Toyota in, on this particular vehicle right here rated at eight in the industry average with 22 more problems per 100 vehicles, right, the Jeep ended up ranking 23rd. So that's a huge, huge benefit for you in the fact, too, that you're not taking our word for it, though. You're taking the fact, too, that J.D. Power Associates says, no, nah, that vehicle, too, doesn't have that much initial quality. Now, they also do a you know, three-year you know, quality testing on that vehicle, too, for long-term dependability. In that rating, Toyota ranked third in initial quality with 77 more problems per 100 vehicles. So what does that mean to you? It means this, in initial quality, 22 problems per 100 vehicles. Within three years, it goes from 22, uh, 22 problems per 100 vehicles to 77 problems per 100 vehicles. I don't know about you too, but that, that, that really doesn't give me the warm and fuzzies too when I'm looking at these vehicles. And so you want to make sure too that the vehicle that you're considering not only is going to give you the initial quality, 
but it's also going to give you long-term quality. So looking at both of those vehicles there, then when you look at the an automatic transmission, automatic transmission in the FJ Cruiser is standard. Five-speed automatic transmission, you know, V6, 4.0 liter V6 engine. The Jeep, their standard transmission in their vehicle too is actually a manual shift. So you actually have to pay extra, you know, if you'll take a look at that, you actually have to pay extra to get an automatic transmission as opposed to you being able to go, you know, with you know, the, uh, the automatic in theirs because the manual is going to be the one. Now, we talk a little bit about the, the ability to be able to pull a boat, pull, things like that too with this type of vehicle. You can literally tow almost 3,000 more pounds, standard 3,000 more pounds with this vehicle versus the Jeep. So when you take into consideration all that this vehicle is going to give you, you know, your ability to one, have a safer vehicle, your ability to give you long-term dependability, your vehicle to give you better reliability, your vehicle to cut down on maintenance cost, and at the same time, if you're going to be pulling anything, doing any type of sporty stuff like that, then you look at the fact too that this vehicle is the vehicle for you. One last thing I want to touch on is the ease of cargo space in the back. With the Jeep, if it's a hard top or if it's a soft top too, the access of getting into the back of the cargo area, one, it's almost three cubic feet more space in the back of this than what you're going to find in the Jeep you know, with their back seat. So you have a whole lot more room in the back of this vehicle than what you're going to have in the Jeep. So you know, think about the fact too, plus when you look at the fact too that most of the Jeeps too are going to come carpeted on the inside, you know, whereas opposed to the FJ, the FJ comes with basically a rubber floor all throughout the vehicle. So the ease of being able to clean it, spray it out, if you're going to go mud bogging, if you're going to go camping, you don't have to worry about too that you're going to be, you know, messing up the inside of the vehicle. Listen, the, the differences are just really, really incredible. When you take into consideration from the front to the back, you know, the FJ is a clear-cut winner. Come on out too and let's take a closer look. Thank you.